The main objective of this Nintendo training video is to demonstrate preventative maintenance procedures and identify susceptible areas that cause Nintendo GameCubes to fail. Dust and contaminants reduce Nintendo GameCube life. Nintendo's tech services department has come up with a procedure to lightly clean the console and the lens. We will show the procedure using the Nintendo GameCube cleaning disc. Clean the following areas of the GameCube using a California duster. Lightly dust the disc compartment area. Do not put pressure on the laser diode lens assembly. Dust the inside of the disc cover, bottom side. Dust the exterior. Open the disc cover and place the cleaning disc in the disc compartment so that the arrow on the cleaning disc points to the open button. Close the disc cover. Press the power button. Wait until you see the menu selection screen appear on the TV screen, then turn off the power. Open the disc cover and look for the arrow on the cleaning disc. If the arrow on the cleaning disc is still pointing to the open button, the cleaning disc may not be working. Reset the arrow toward the open button and repeat steps four and five three times. Remove the cleaning disc from the GameCube. Place a known good game disc in the disc compartment and turn on the power. There may be times when the problem isn't necessarily the Nintendo GameCube itself. You may encounter a situation where you get an error message. The disc could not be read. The first thing a NMI rep would want to do is visually inspect the demo disc. It is possible that the demo disc may be dirty or damaged. Examples of things to look for as far as damage would consist of cracks, chips, or scratches on the disc. Other problems, such as dust, dirt, lint, fingerprints, or signs of a dried liquid being present can cause disc read errors. If you notice any signs of excessive wear and tear and or physical damage, replace the demo disc with a new one. If it looks as though the disc can be cleaned, clean the disc by wiping with a soft, lint-free cloth from the middle to the outside edge. Do not use paper, as this may scratch the surface of the disc. Do not use anything other than water for cleaning. Use a straight motion and not a circular motion. Wiping the disc in a circular motion can scratch the disc in a manner that may render the disc unreadable. After cleaning the disc, reinsert it into the Nintendo GameCube and check to see if it is going to be functional. You can also find this step under Nintendo GameCube troubleshooting in your handheld. The next preventative maintenance step we will cover is identifying failing Nintendo GameCube controllers. We are going to show various examples of problems you may encounter with the Nintendo GameCube controller. The joystick and buttons on the controller need to be looked at and tried out. Due to normal wear and tear, and also substances such as spillage or dirt, the buttons may stick or not spring back into place like they need to. Any sign of the button sticking or other physical damage, such as the cap on top of the joystick being broken off, would require a controller replacement. On the controller, look for small cracks that may be anywhere on the housing. This would require a controller replacement. Visually inspect the controller cable for any wear cuts, exposed wire, and or frayed cable. Pinched cables are not that common on controllers due to the routing, but should be looked at. As stated earlier, it may seem that the controller is functioning okay, but if you see any of the various problems that we have shown in the video, replace the controller on the display. Identifying defective power cables for the Game Boy Advance and the new SP interactives is another area that NMI representatives want to pay close attention to. Any AC adapter or connecting cable should be looked at closely to determine if there are any frayed portions, exposed wire, cuts, or a pinched cable. 
Running the cable between your fingers is a simple way of finding any defects. Pinch cables seem to be more commonplace with power cables due to the routing of the cables on certain displays. Another area to look at is the connection points of the power cables. On the SP Interactives, the connection points have Molex connectors. These are the small black plastic connectors that can be damaged from either the cable being pulled or excessive wear and tear. In some cases, the connectors may have popped off exposing the wires or the pins. Do not attempt to repair the damaged connectors. Install a new AC adapter or extension cable. You may have an interactive that has intermittent power where the power cuts off if the cable is moved at all. This could be a problem at the connection point or with the cable itself. You may not notice any damage with a power cable that is causing this problem. In summary, replace any AC power supply that is damaged or has a connector that has fallen off or if you are having intermittent problems with power. If you have any additional questions regarding this video, please call DOTS at 1-800-875-1852.